love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka Show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet Union. Hello, comrades, and welcome back to the Oshanka Show. Здравствуйте, товарищи. Well, be ready for another long and boring video about life in Soviet Union. Today is a Soviet vacation part three. Uh, today we'll talk about how people use the train to go south, to go down to the Black Sea for the summer vacation. I already covered uh, tra traveling by train quite extensively in my video number 38. So if you want to get more details about traveling by train in Soviet Union, please check it out my video number 38, which is Life in USSR number 38. Some of my viewers commented that it'll be great to interview some other comrades, people who lived in Soviet Union or still live uh, over there uh, on that side of the pond and get their perspective about life in the USSR. And in fact, I've already uh, done it several times. I asked people uh, to write some memories about things and I presented my videos. So most of my videos is actually a combination of my memories and also uh, recollections of other people. So today's story is actually from my uh, friend Vitaly from Kiev, way about same age, and his family, in fact, traveled down to Black Sea way more often. In total, they traveled 17 times during the Soviet Union and after, so he has way more memories about uh, uh, having a vacation at the Black Sea, and today I will read his story about traveling by train. The reason why train was the most popular way of transportation in the Soviet Union is airplanes were quite expensive. Generally, uh, flying from Kiev to uh, some Black Sea destination would be uh, twice as much as traveling by train, so only people who can uh, who earned a lot of money like for example taxi drivers or restaurant waiters and those people could afford uh, to travel by airplane or of course you know uh, party leaders or some management regular workers that was quite pricey for them to fly so most people took a train and of course you know you can't sleep pretty decently on a train because you had beds you couldn't do it on the bus, so train was the most popular means of tra uh, traveling for the long distances. We used to have three levels of uh, train cars, like say levels or types. Uh, the most comfortable was so-called SV, spalny wagon, so uh, you can translate like a s sleep car. It had only uh, like a small compartments with a door, like small rooms for two people. So each compartment contained room for only two people. So it was way less crowded. And of course it was way more expensive. Next one was so-called coupe. And that one you had uh, small compartments for four people. So two people were sleeping on a, uh, like a ground floor and upper bunks, there's uh, two other guys. And of course you can close the door kind of block yourself from the traffic in a corridor. And the most popular uh, and most common was so-called Platzkart. And as I said, I already covered those uh, topics, but that's when we have, it's pretty much was wide open and you had people uh, in the small compartments on one side, but you have a uh, space for four people to sit and sleep and two more people who sit uh, by the window right in the walkway and that was the worst spot to be well the worst will be on the side by the bathrooms by the toilet so that will be the closest to the toilet will be the stinkiest the noisiest because you know there's a foot traffic and day and night people going to use the bathroom and of course as longer you travel as smellier it becomes to sit right there by the toilet not by the toilet like by the bathroom but we just call it toilet so by the toilet. As Vitaly mentioned, uh, since you travel uh, down south in the summer, so he said, when you travel coupe or plats cart, there was always really uh, hot in the cars and very stuffy because there was no air conditioning really going on. And uh, the only way you can get fresh air if you manage to open the window uh, in your compartment. And quite often those windows were jammed shut so you couldn't even open them or um, you couldn't even close them. And I believe sometimes the people um, 
It's like each car, each train car had a person in charge, provodnik or provodnica, so male or female. Um, and they will jam those windows on purpose because if you keep windows open, it brings the dirt inside. So it means there's more cleaning to do for them. So they will uh, purposely jam the, uh, those small sliding windows and they prefer people to be you know, suffocating, but at least they have less work of cleaning. He recalls that most uh, of his travels, uh, they always had uh, old uh, Soviet made uh, train cars really are uh, seldom there'll be a new uh, train car. We use some made in Germany, Eastern Germany, of course, DDR. So those were nicer ones, but all the, most of the time he said uh, trains in Ukraine going from Kiev down south were older ones in, in a pretty crappy condition. Uh, Food-wise, each train had so-called wagon restaurant. So there was like a restaurant, like a cafeteria on wheels. But not many people used it because it's pretty expensive. So if you travel, uh, for example, from Kiev to Crimean Peninsula, it takes you day and a half. So you live around sometimes in the evening and afternoon Kiev. And then you sleep on a train and then you arrive sometimes. Uh, so about 24 hour uh, train trip. So people will bring their own food. I do not recall uh, any coolers, like food coolers available for purchase back in the Soviet Union. Uh, here I see people using them all the time, you know, plastic coolers or old fashioned metal coolers to put your food. And we had thermoses so you could keep your drinks hot, but we never had actual coolers. Um, so if you bring food with you on a train, uh, you bring something that doesn't get spoiled quick. Uh, the most popular type of food snacks was uh, hard-boiled eggs, uh, maybe some grilled chicken, and then some kind of uh, like a salami type kalbasa, kielbasa, salami. So that doesn't get spoiled. Then of course you bring some fresh cucumbers or tomatoes. And always we like to eat tomatoes or cucumbers, you know, just you cut them in pieces, then you salt, put some salt on it, and that's how I eat it. So. <laughs> the most popular way of bringing salt would be you put some in your matchbox. So Soviet matches were in these little uh, convenient matchboxes and that's what people use uh, to bring salt or sugar. And then of course you bring some like uh, sweet uh, candy, uh, some water, uh, some mineral water. And along the train, uh, when the train stops at the different train stations, you can uh, jump out and purchase some uh, There'll be some old ladies selling maybe beer or maybe some uh, uh, dry fish and other snacks, maybe some apples, depending on the season and some uh, homemade bake uh, bakery. So that's how people would usually snack on the way uh, to the Black Sea or generally traveling on a train, just basic uh, homemade food, nothing fancy. And of course, you have to mention that when you're on a train, you always order tea. And pretty much every train car will have a, a boiler and they had this interesting kind of tea cups on the trains uh, with the logo of the, you know, Soviet railroad stations. And you can purchase tea from a Pravodnik and that's kind of your way you uh, spend your time sipping tea and looking out the window and talking to your neighbors in the, your compartment. And I remember that tea quite well because you know, it's a glass cup inside of the metal uh, holder. So when the train is moving and your cup is empty, it always makes that interesting metal, you know, noise metal on the glass on the metal. So that noise was always remind me of a uh, uh, traveling by train because when you go to bed and people have empty cups sitting on the table, they all make it in din 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 uh, It wasn't a Christmas uh, noise, but this is the empty and teacups on a train sound. It was very important uh, when you arrive, you know, come to the train station uh, that you occupy your place as quick as possible. Uh, so there'll be people line up waiting uh, on the platform. Then, you know, when the train pulls in, you try to get in as quick as possible and claim your place according to your ticket. So your ticket will tell you uh, which number of your uh, your place and it's upper bunk or lower bunk. Uh, the reason why, because quite often uh, they'll sell 
so-called double so you have a twin so you might have two tickets for the same spot and then you have a problem so usually the rule is whoever uh, takes that spot first that the person uh, occupies it and then there'll be a job of the uh, train uh, employees, uh, workers to find, you know, train staff to find the spots for the extra people. I'm not sure why that was happening. Maybe people are making extra cash or maybe just a, a sincere mistake. But uh, Vitaly mentioned so quite often uh, the, you could have uh, two people on the same spot, sometimes even three. Uh, and since on every train they had uh, empty seats, for so-called just in case so if some you know like military need or some other needs uh, so they will keep some spots empty unoccupied to the last minute and only then they'll sell tickets or they'll be the places that those uh, twins uh, in parentheses will occupy so provodnik you know your uh, your train car uh, staff person will check your tickets on when you climb in the in the train car then after train moves uh, start going he will check tickets again and uh, then he will ask you would you like to purchase a bedding the cost of bedding was one ruble and some people didn't want to waste their money so they will refuse so in interesting situation you know bedding usually will be washed but sometimes will be damp according to vitali and on the third level up high there'll be a mattresses that you're supposed to unroll and then you lay your bed in and the rule was that if you don't purchase bed in you're not allowed to use those mattresses and those mattresses were quite nasty because they didn't look like they were ever washed so because you know why do you need to wash the mattress because people put you know bedding over it and uh some people you know they'll try in the middle of the night when a Provodnik is asleep to actually bring the mattress down and sleep right on the mattress. And of course, that makes it dirty because you don't have sheets on the top. Uh, also, Vitaly mentioned that if you experienced a traveler by train, you knew that you need to bring a wet uh, rug with you. Uh, so you wipe off clean the table and the shelves because usually they'll have a thin layer of dirt and dust. So sounds like the uh, Provodnik people didn't really bother of doing deep cleaning. And then you bring some old newspapers with you and they go on the floor. So the bottom bunk you actually, you can open up and that's where you store your luggage. Plus you can also put your luggage on a third shelf way up high. So you don't want to have your bags dirty. So you bring your an old newspapers with you and you lay them down on the floor in the uh, luggage compartment. Then you can put your bags and that's how you make sure they stay clean. And bathrooms, of course, it's <laughs> Soviet train uh, bathroom or something else. And actually some of my viewers commented that the similar things was uh, practiced in Scotland uh, for many years uh, that you just go use the bathroom and when you flush the toilet the bottom opens up and the, your piss or your crap just falls out right on the uh, railroad tracks and then it closes. So I remember train bathrooms were always nasty, smelly, disgusting and it was the worst thing you can imagine if you need to go number two because the, uh, you'll be missing the lid, the seat part, you know, where you sit um, or it'll be so disgusting. So a lot of people would just climb right on the toilet and they squat sitting on the toilet and so you know you climb on the toilet you squat over it and that's how you can go number two of course you need to bring your own toilet paper because uh, they wouldn't provide that so that was always my bad memories is you hated to go use in the bathroom and you try to time yourself that if you need to go number two you just like okay we have a 15 minutes a stop at the train station i better race and use uh, bathrooms over there at the train station although well, they probably be pretty dirty too but at least they don't shake so there's no reason i can fall and get myself dirty no hot water was available on in the bathrooms only cold water and of course if you train full of kids uh, and as long as the trip is then the worst and worst smell will be in the train bathroom and sounds like uh, they didn't want to clean really well so yeah that was one of the worst memories is like if you get a spot by the bathroom on the side it was the worst and of course uh, while you're traveling down south uh, you need to be really watching f uh, because 
and people who steal money or thieves, uh, criminals, they know that if people go down south, they bring cash with them. Uh, they are so-called atpuskne, their vacation pay. So when you sleep, you want to make sure that, you know, you have your money hidden somewhere that's not easy to get, uh, stuff like that, because it was quite often that people will wake up and money are missing. So as I said, seasoned uh, train travelers, they would go and I purchased ticket maybe like a month in advance and even even earlier and um, you want to buy a ticket f in the middle of the car so it's further as possible away from the bathroom and preferably in the beginning of the train because as closer you, to you to the beginning of the train as less uh, rocking going on and the last uh, cars in the train they, they shake the most so this is kind of like you're wondering about okay can I buy the ticket is it decent and of course if you came late and, and you're desperate then you buy whatever is available uh, and uh, Vitaly mentioned that a flight like coupe uh, which was more expensive was twice cheaper and the Platz cart was three times cheaper than uh, going from Kiev, Kiev to Simferopol versus flying from Kiev to Adler. So that was a quite a price difference. So people were willing uh, to sacrifice their time and comfort in order to save money. Okay, so this is a conclusion of my uh, Soviet vacation, part three, series of videos about uh, uh, Soviet people, how they spend free time in the summer. I hope you enjoy the show. As always, please don't forget to put like under this video. It helps to promote it so more people can see it and learn about life in Soviet Union. We'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye.